Hey, today I'm answering the following Cubase question. Hello, Chris. I'm a bit confused when it comes to the signal flow in Cubase. Uh, with the pre-gain and channel strip, is it possible to explain that to me? Yes, it's possible, and this is what I'm going to do in this video, because I know that can be confusing for some. Let's check it out. Hey, what's up, my friend? Chris Salim here from Mixdown Online. Thank you for watching this video. It's always a pleasure, and I'm always excited to make these videos week after week to help you out. So now, let's jump right in Cubase and go back to the basics and talk about the signal flow. All right, so now I have a recording here, and this is actually where I'm going to start my signal flow. This is going to be like the first, uh, the initial starting point of the signal flow that is the actual recording. Uh, there's some stuff you can do on that recording uh, that will affect the rest of the flow, like clip gain, for example, uh, by bringing down that little square that I have in the center of that audio event, if I bring it down or up, that will bring up or down the gain level of that event, okay? Uh, and that will affect the amount of level of that event throughout the signal flow in Cubase. And same if you add very audio or uh, audio warp, okay? That will also affect the signal, you know, down the signal flow in Cubase, okay? So everything you do on that audio event is gonna affect the rest of the signal flow. Okay, next, the first stop straight from the mix console is going to be the pre-section, okay, which is this one right here. Uh, right on top, I'm just going to close these other uh, tabs here. And on top, I have the pre-tab um, that if I click on, I'm going to get a high-pass filter, low-pass filter, the gain level of the channel, and also the uh, polarity switch uh, with phase on and off. Now, if you don't see that pre-tab uh, here, you just need to go on racks on top and make sure the pre-filter gain phase is checked on. So this way you can have access to this pre-tab. So this is going to be like the first stop of the signal through the mix console. And if I open the channel settings window, I also have access to the pre-section of the channel settings window. Again, where I can add a high pass filter, low pass filter that I use a lot when mixing, and also uh, the gain level and the polarity switch. And that gain level is what I use the most when gain staging a recording before starting to mix, uh, which is very, very useful. But again, note that if you play around with this gain, uh, this gain knob right here, um, that will affect the, uh, the signal level throughout the rest of the signal flow, so you need to pay attention to this. I'm gonna explain that to you a bit more in depth later. Uh, next, we go down to the inserts, and the insert section uh, right here on the mix console is where you're gonna um, you're gonna have your plugins, your mixing plugins like an EQ, compressor, saturation, uh, and so on. And the signal is gonna go from the top uh, the top um, plugin to the last plugin at the bottom. Okay, from top to bottom. The signal is going to go through all those processing plugins. And then it's going to go to the channel strip where I have different types of modules. And the, um, uh, the one that is activated by default is the EQ module, which can be found right here in the center part of the channel settings window. Uh, and also on the mix console under the EQ tab. So if I, uh, let's say I am just going to add a band here. And there you go. So everything that I do on this uh, EQ, which is also which also includes a graphic analyzer, which is quite cool, uh, is also going to be shown at the bottom of the channel settings window, where I'm going to see all the parameters that I've made on the graphic part of the EQ. Same here, if I uh, use it straight from the uh, uh, the mix console, I can do the same. And again, everything is going to be applied straight on the channel settings window and also on the uh, the mix console. And within the channel strip itself, the signal is going to go from the left plugin, like left module, to the right one, okay, from left to right. So if I have other modules activated like a de -esser or a compressor, uh, saturation, for example, okay, um, 
the signal is going to go in this case uh, through the deesser first, then the compressor, the EQ, and then the tape saturation. Uh, if I want to change that around, very simple. Let's say I want my EQ to be the first in the chain. I want my signal to go through the EQ first. I'm going to just drag it to the left, and now my signal flow is going to go from the EQ and down to all those other modules. Okay, that simple. And the cool thing is that I can switch that around. So let's say I want my signal to go through the channel strip before it goes through the inserts. I can do so by clicking that little move channel strip to pre insert position button right here. And that will bring the strip, the channel strip before the signal is going to hit the insert. So in this case, uh, the signal is going to go through all those modules that are activated. So this one is, uh, I only have like the EQ activated right now. So the signal, the signal is going to go through the Cubase channel EQ, and then it's going to go down to the insert plugins. So that is the way the signal is going to flow. And then it's going to go in the sends. If you need to send a copy of that uh, signal to another channel, like an effects channel track for uh, a delay or reverb, uh, this is where you you're going to do it. So the signal is going to go through that section, the send section of the mix console, and you'll be able to route a copy of that signal elsewhere uh, on a reverb, a delay, or all sorts of effects, a part of an effects channel. And then it's going to go down to the main fader of the channel for the general uh, volume level of that channel. Okay, so if you bring up or down that channel, it's going to bring the total of the processing made on that channel up or down. On the other side, if you're doing it through the uh, the gain level of the channel, now this is going to affect again the pre-gain level, okay? So before all the processing, before all that signal flow, okay? So it will affect the level going into all of your plugins and modules from the channel strip. So for example, if I click on that channel strip and I uh, activate that compressor, okay, let's check what we have here. Okay, let me bring down the threshold so I get some compression just for uh, the sake of this example. And now what I'm going to do here, I am going to bring down the gain level of that channel and listen to the amount of compression I'm going to get now. Now, the level is lower, of course, but the amount of signal going into all those plugins and modules like the compressor is not the same. It's not at the same level. So it affects the amount of gain reduction that I'm getting at the moment. I usually don't touch my pre-gain level when I'm in the middle of a mix or near the end of a mix because I know that will affect the rest of my signal flow through the uh, the channel, going through all the plugins and the processing. So very important to keep that in mind, the signal flow, okay? <laughs> uh, then uh, the signal is gonna go out of that channel and to the stereo output, unless it's going somewhere else before. So let me show you from the, uh, the channel settings window, if I click on this show output chain, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a visual of where my signal is gonna go from that channel, like going out of my main electric guitar channel, it's going to go out to the mix guitar group channel that I have on my mix session. And then it's going to go out uh, to the main output of Cubase. Okay, so this is where uh, the signal is going to go. So that is the entire signal flow in Cubase. Okay, so it's going to start by the, um, the recording itself. So if you play with clip gain, that will affect the amount of level you know, throughout the signal flow of Cubase. The first stop is going to be the pre-section, where we have a high-pass filter, low-pass filter, the polarity switch, and the most important, the uh, pre-gain level of the channel uh, to set up the gain level of the channel before everything else. And then it's going to go through the inserts and the channel strip, but again, you can switch that around with this little guy right here. And then to the sands of the channel, to send a copy of your signal to an effects channel, and then through the fader of the channel to the output of the channel down to whatever is following that channel, in my case, a group channel, and then the stereo out channel of Cubase. So there you go, my friend. This is the signal flow in Cubase. I hope that was helpful. If so, don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to the channel if you're not already. And if you have any Cubase questions or music production questions or comments, you can leave everything down below. Until next time, take care and see you, my friend.